Okay, hello everyone. My name is Max. This is Ryan. We are the two co-founders at Biokind, where our mission is to make shrimp farming more sustainable. When I was just a little kid, one of my favorite things was a weekly trip to the fish and chip shop with my dad, where I would always order breaded shrimp. But recently, I was sad to learn that this favorite childhood dish of mine is contributing to ecosystem destruction and the release of millions of tons of CO2. This is because farmed shrimp need lots of protein in their diets. This protein currently comes from soy and from wild fish, but increasing demand is driving overfishing and deforestation. This is why, at Biokinds, we produce a new sustainable protein ingredient. We sell it to shrimp feed producers for 1,100 euros per ton. Our beachhead market are shrimp feed producers in Vietnam. And the reason why we chose Vietnam is because there's a massive push by the Vietnamese government to double shrimp production by the year 2025. This means that by 2025, an additional 270,000 tons of protein is required annually to meet this goal. Our beachhead market is currently valued at 170 million euros. And in Asia, where 75% of the shrimp is produced, that market is valued at 1.7 billion euros. We have the option to expand our product range into the fish, livestock, and pet feed industries, giving us a total addressable market of 100 billion euros. Stream feed producers need to source high-quality feed ingredients, which are consistent in nutritional profile from batch to batch, and they have to be in supplies that can meet the growing demand. And like with any other business, they want to increase their profits at the same time. Our proprietary process uniquely positions us to be able to produce and meet all these demands simultaneously. While our competitors who produce protein from algae or insects struggle to do so. So protein is the single biggest cost element in shrimp feed. And by switching to our ingredients, our customers can increase their margins by approximately 15%. But what's more, we can offer them a stable price over the time. This is really important because one of the biggest pain points facing our customers right now is the wildly fluctuating and rising price of raw ingredients. Our product is a bacteria-based protein ingredient. It is non-GMO, it is safe, and it is already a legal ingredient in all major markets. Our competitive edge comes from our uh, innovative thermochemical process, which allows us to break down crop waste, accessing it as a uh, cheap and abundant resource. We take this crop waste, which could be leaves and stems, break it down to release sugars, which are then fed to the bacteria. This bacteria is harvested, inactivated, and dries to a powder, which becomes our final product. This unique combination of, of cheap crop waste, our efficient technology, and bacteria means that we can beat the competition on price and nutritional consistency. So we spoke to 22 customers over the past few months, and we had three really important learning points. The first one is, our customers need large volumes. 10,000 tons per year is the minimum order uh, requirement. Secondly, when evaluating new ingredients, the price and the nutritional consistency are the most important characteristics. And finally, based on current commodity prices, the price they're willing to pay is 1,100 euros per ton. But something else really exciting came from these conversations. Two of our customers were so enthused with Biokind that they connected us directly with their corporate venture capital arms. These have asked that we keep in touch with our progress with the eye for making an investment when we are ready. Once we capture 50% of our beachhead market, our annual profits will be valued at 24 million euros. Our customers currently value our product at 1,100 euros per ton, and with our proprietary process, we can produce this with a profit margin of 54%. Our key profit drivers are the price and cost of product and the number of customers we have. We will save CO2 from being emitted by reducing the amount of international shipping required to move protein ingredients around. But the biggest contributor of all is actually the prevention of land use change. By providing a sustainably sourced alternative protein, we can prevent wild land from being taken and used to cultivate soybeans for protein. Land use change releases huge amounts of carbon in the atmosphere as cleared vegetation is allowed to degrade or burn. We need to stop this. Once we capture 50% of our beachhead market, we will prevent 5.6 million tons of CO2 from being emitted into the atmosphere. Our team is passionate and dedicated. Above all, we have the right mix of skills to scale this business along with prior startup experience. We, our dream is to create a 100 million euro revenue company, which is a part of a global food supply system that can feed the planet sustainably. We're biokind, and we want to make animal farming more sustainable. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, come forward. Okay. Hi. 
Ashwin. The, the logistics of collecting this much agricultural waste, um, can you say something about that? And also, there must be something that that waste is already being used for. And how do you plan to displace that? So, great question. There, this is actually one of the big issues in this sort of operation. But um, two things. One, some crop production systems, such as rice, they actually uh, agglomerate some of the feedstock at a mill, which we can collect from. So it's already centralized. Uh, other parts of the rice production system could be straw, which is common for our other agricultural production systems. They leave them in the field, and they're burned, actually. Uh, but it's not too expensive to collect them from the field, especially if we're working in, in countries such as India or Vietnam, even our beachhead market, uh, where it's, it's an affordable thing to do. Your, your assumption about uh, volumes looks ambitious, and I'm, I'm keen to find out other than price, are there other, have you thought about other switching costs that uh, customers are going to have, other than just price? So, sorry, you're saying the volume, the minimum order volume? Yes, to, uh, to justify those volumes, uh, mm -hmm. there must be other switching costs, because customers are already using other mm -hmm. products. So, so we've, we've spoken to customers, and they have looked at like, similar ingredients, but they're just not available in the quantities needed. Uh, so they, they know how to put it into their process, and we, we're pretty confident that there isn't much of a cost into switching the ingredients. It should be pretty straightforward for them. Dawn. I guess I have a similar question around the scale-up of the technology. So mm -hmm. I didn't see any manufacturing experience on your team, and these volumes look aggressive. Can you talk about how you're going to attack manufacturing? So currently we're in the, in the stage about developing a small-scale pilot, and the way we develop the process is in a way we already aim for scale-up from the get-go. So our process is designed specifically to enable us to produce at quantities that the customers want to purchase at. Kirsten. It was actually a very related question. I'm just, there's a relationship here across the questions you've just heard that is, um, is niggling in my head around um, what is the opportunity cost of using the material that you would need to use at scale to produce the scale of, of feed that you're talking about? What are the... What are the barriers or obstacles or kind of leverage points that you will need to get the relationship right? So in terms of the feedstock for us? Yeah, you're yeah. going to need to use a lot to scale to that, mm -hmm. yeah. that uh, quantity and, and sustained quantity mm -hmm. of feed to yeah. really take out the soya market. Yeah, so I mean, so security of feedstock is, is something which we're, we're thinking about. Um, we, we've been looking at business models where we maybe do a profit share with feedstock suppliers or we, we somehow have a kind of joint working arrangement. Uh, so it's not just a relationship of us purchasing it. Um, it. It really does depend on the individual uh, producer as well. Maybe they would prefer just a simple relationship of, you know, we buy it from them. But yeah, we're looking at partnerships, that sort of thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.